Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna hopefully be adding a few plants to the inside of the Hartley greenhouse. You can see that's where I'm sitting right now. I also wanna give you an update just on how everything's going, both inside and outside. I'll show you around, give you a quick tour in here. Uh, we did receive the dining table that I ordered in April. It just arrived last week and it's perfect, you guys. I absolutely love it, but I'm such a visual person. I knew I would love the table. I just didn't know how, once I got it in here, how it would feel and how many things I could add around it and still have it be comfortable to move around in here. Because as you guys know, we're using this greenhouse in several different ways. Of course, we'll have lots of plants in here eventually. It may not be today uh, because I don't know exactly where, what we're gonna find. We're gonna go down to the garden center here in a minute and do some shopping. Um, but I don't wanna just fill it with just any old things. I just want it to be things that are beautiful that I think are, you know, perfect for this space and hopefully low maintenance because you guys know my those of you who've been watching our videos know that my weakness with plants is interior potted things <laughs> I can't have things be really fussy um, I, I don't enjoy taking care of fussy plants a little bit like I can do a few fussy plants but I don't want a lot of them so we're gonna kind of focus on things that that don't need that sort of attention. So yeah, we're using this structure for plants, more finished type plants, things that are already potted, um, hopefully some citrus, I've got a potted fig in here. We're gonna be doing most of our like big production seedling, you know, seed starting stuff in the plastic greenhouse still because that area I can just, you know, completely make a huge mess. And I can make a huge mess in here. It's just much easier to clean up in there because there's really no cleanup. The dirt just kind of disappears through the gravel. In here, you know, we need to clean the floor a little bit more often, which is not a big deal. It's still greenhouse and I don't intend on keeping it like clean like an inside like an interior space uh, but we are going to be using this as a family to eat dinner and breakfast and come out in here and hang out and just have like a really quiet spot you know in the middle of beautiful gardens hopefully one day we have beautiful gardens around here but that's kind of how I envision it I envision having other people over and being able to use this as kind of an extension of the house I just it feels unreal that we are sitting in here this morning chatting in a Hartley greenhouse in the garden I just it just feels like an incredible privilege to be able to go and pick some things out to put in here I was kind of overcome by it yesterday I was standing in our barn and I was looking kind of knowing what I wanted to do today I was looking at our containers and thinking what container do I want to put in this space and it just kind of like washed over me I thought I can't even believe that I'm picking out stuff to put in a greenhouse like this and I know that it's because of you guys I mean there would be no greenhouse sitting here if you guys weren't watching our videos and supporting what we do and just being just such an encouragement to us so thank you to all of you because you know we kind of we did this together and that's just amazing to me it's an incredible blessing to us and then I know a few of you guys I've seen some comments about how like why aren't you using the greenhouse why don't you have anything in there um, and then again like I just explained I'm such a visual person that I kind of wanted to have everything in here we've also had a lot of work going on around it um, as you guys know the water line so here's your update on that so the water line that comes into the greenhouse it wasn't buried deep enough I didn't find this out until everything was done and uh, so there's a frost free line that runs right behind our greenhouse and goes to a frost free faucet and what that means is that the line is just buried deep enough to where we have water access all throughout the whole winter um, and they were supposed to tee off of that and come up you know go underneath the soil at the same depth and then pop up um, once they were inside the structure because we do plan on adding some heat just enough to not like let things die in here you know we're not going to heat it like the inside of the house but anyway the line should have come at that same depth which is four feet underneath the structure and then popped up a little bit more shallow and then run over to the sink and I found out that they teed off outside of the greenhouse, brought up the water line to just not very far below the soil surface, and then came into the Hartley instead of doing it at the proper depth. And that means that we would have to shut off all of our water even to the frost freeze, because if you have one water line that could possibly freeze and break that's attached to those, you can't have the water on. Um, the only way we could have gotten away with that is to leave our water on a trickle in here, just leave the water running. And I don't wanna do that. So I just thought, you know what? It's still powder dirt around this whole structure. Let's get this fixed. And so they dug up, they actually had to remove part of the floor of the Hartley, the, just the part that comes outside the door, nothing inside. Um, they were able to dig down and I'm not sure that they actually dug down to the 48 inch depth, I need to ask. Um, but I think they added a bunch of that foam, um, it's like that spray insulation stuff around the pipe. 
Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so they did something to fix that <laughs> this last week. Uh, and that was a little bit of a bummer because we were just getting ready to start our brick work out here. So that's the next thing. Now that the water line is fixed, uh, Benny and his crew are gonna come and they're gonna brick, do the brick border around all of our planting areas around here. And we thought, well, we can't plant anything until that's done because they need to get their, uh, they've got like a ditch witch, like a little loader thing. Anyway, they have to get that into this area and we don't wanna have any plants in the way. And the last thing is the maple tree outside. In fact, we should just go out there. Okay, so there's the maple right there. It looks like it only has maybe two or three branches that still have green leaves on it. And the rest of it has died. <laughs> We had three large trees installed earlier on this season. Uh, two large evergreens, this was in May, and then this maple. The evergreens have, they transplanted beautifully. They got new growth on them. They just, they look awesome. This tree struggled from the gate because what happened is one, when they dug the tree, they cut off two main branches that created a good portion of like the shape of the tree. So when we initially had it installed, I was kind of like, that's, not really the tree that we picked out, you know, because now it doesn't even have the shape that it did out in the field, like big time doesn't have the shape. Um, also, one of the branches, one of the other big core branches, which I'll show you, split. And so we had to bolt that together and it didn't survive that. Um, anyway, it also, after they dug it, it had to sit in the field for a couple of days in that great big digger kind of tool uh, because we got a huge storm that come through, came through with a bunch of rain and they got stuck. So the tree was dug up, sitting in that truck for a couple of days before it even made it over here. So it had a lot of things against it. And you know, um, the tree farm that we got them from, they are actually gonna come and take care of it and all of that. We're gonna actually pick out another evergreen. I think we're gonna stick with deciduous trees. We'll probably go with maybe like B&B, &B, ball and burlap kind of size trees uh, at the largest instead of trying to do a great big deciduous one. Uh, but the evergreens we've had great luck with. Let me show you from this side. Right here is where two of the main branches were uh, at. So they actually formed up the rest of this canopy. And if I get close, you can see where the cuts were made. There's a big cut there and a big cut right there. And then this branch here was laying on the truck and it split in half. So Aaron went up and bolted it and that doesn't look like it's gonna come back at this point. The owner of the tree farm has been really great about it. He came out just like last week and took a look at it, but we've been giving him picture updates all throughout the season. Like he knew when we had to bolt the branch together and all of that, cause we just wanna keep the communication open. Um, so anyway, he's gonna come out this fall, like probably next month and we'll take that tree up. We might pop it on the new property. I am not sure at this point with how much is looking dead in this tree that it's worth trying to limp along this big of a tree because I hate I hate to move it and have the whole thing not survive and then have to pay to have it removed if that makes sense so anyway I'm not sure what we're going to do there we'll update you guys but we do plan on putting actually eight trees around here not big ones we're going to start with smaller trees uh, for deciduous and then we're going to actually pick out a new evergreen to kind of replace this one to put out in the new property yeah that's just not looking super hot what a bummer. Interesting learning experience though, for sure. But you might be able to see the pins in the ground. You can see right here where this string is, we're actually gonna cut down. There's gonna be a stair leading down in here. I've kind of uh, explained this. I did a little bit of an overhead drawing showing you guys the, the shape of this area out here. We're actually gonna put a tree here and a matching one over here. And the same trees will be matching up here and on the other side. So we'll have, uh, and then let's see, two in the back. So we'll have eight trees around the structure that match and bring some major balance because the rest of this garden we're not going to have we're not going to like tear up a bunch of this i like these flower beds over here so we want to have a lot of balance and formality around this structure and then kind of carry on with something a little bit more informal and then as we swing back this way this is where they had to dig up for the water line so they only had to remove like this much right here because the water line comes in right here so they got that all repaired and then let's take a look around in here Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous table, you guys. I love, love it so much. It's the perfect color. I was really like, I really wanted to make sure like the top is bluestone. I wanted to use all natural materials, things that um, just kind of blended together beautifully. I like the color of the wood with the color of the wicker that turned out great. 
So yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, also, I know that we can fit, I have two more of these chairs coming that we won't put in here. We'll probably put them up against the house and use them as like chairs out there. Um, but if we want to have more than, you know, four people sitting at this table, we can bring those chairs in and I think they will absolutely fit. But, you know, I wanted to see how much space we would have right in here. You know, I probably won't put a bunch of stuff right in this section. I'll probably put something here um, and then maybe some things on the windowsill. We've got room in the corner there. We've got a fig here, which is doing beautifully. In fact, yeah, these might even be a little bit past their prime. We have some figs and I've been eating them just like straight off the plant. Yeah, these are a little bit overripe. You open it up. Look how beautiful. So this is a Chicago hardy fig. I bought it last, was it last spring or the spring before maybe? It lived in our greenhouse, the plastic greenhouse, all of last winter. It is a zone six, I think, but I wanted to protect it a little bit. It lived in there and then we brought it in here and I was a little concerned because our mini split, our AC unit right here, it kind of blows on the leaves but it's not shown any sign of stress, like no yellowing, nothing. It just has looked great. So we have space in that corner for plants. We'll probably put some plants around in the corners here. Uh, I did cut a huge bunch of smoke bush branches yesterday. These are off a Winecraft black smoke bush that we have in a flower bed just right back here. Uh, it's between the driveway and the back formal garden where we have the circle, circular boxwoods. We're going to be tearing out a lot of that flower bed in order to kind of retool that whole space. It'll still be planting area. So some things may stay, but some things we're gonna dig up and move around. Anyway, this Winecraft black had some really wild arms with beautiful blooms that I thought would look pretty in a basin here. I think they're the right scale for this area. And I was unsure if I wanna leave this table right here. I sure do love it. I love having a table right in the center. It does have a very similar structure to this table, but you can move around it with ease. I mean, there's like several feet around this thing. Um, so it's easy to move around and it's kind of fun to have a central thing to look at. And then on this wall, we have a console table that my mom and I picked up when we were antiquing one day. And it looks really pretty in here. I love like the legs on it are really fun. It's all messy on the top because of, I cut all the smoke, smoke bush branches on here last night. Uh, I do have another plant stand from Gardener Supply that they sent out last year when the Hartley was just being completed. And it's kind of like a stair step one. So I might put that one in here depending on what we find today. And then our countertop here, we recently just had this done and I showed you this, I think in a previous video, but this sink, I still wanna put some kind of like a, a block so you don't see all this stuff. You know, we've got a filtration system and a little heater right there, water heater. Um, and then we've got an area where we can hook a little hose so I can water things in here really easily. And then I wanna tuck a garbage can in here somewhere. And then on this side where it's a little bit more open, I'll probably stack a bunch of containers like terracotta pots. I think that would look pretty and it would be nice because we still will have a potting area right in here or right here, you know, somewhere over in this area. I did root some Tritoscantia yesterday. These were all leggy and they looked horrible in the plant studio. So I cleaned the pots out, gave them fresh soil and uh, just cut the ends and put them in here all fresh. So they look really good. We do have enough space on the back side. See that brick ledge right there? Wouldn't it look pretty to get like some of those taller, skinny terracotta pots and then have like a topiary collection? That might be really way too close to the glass, but maybe we could do something. Maybe some kind of like a pretty succulent collection of some kind. And then over here, our sink. I just have some napkins over here and then a candle that I burn all the time. This is a one from Joann's. It's crisp marines, driftwood, and ambered musk. I don't know what it is, but that mini split with the, the plastic smell it had when it was installed, it still has like a pretty strong smell. Mix that with the varnish on this countertop, like the base of it. Oh, it was not a good mix. So I've been burning a candle in here pretty much all the time and it really does help cover the smell. I know all of that will dissipate over time. So that's pretty much where we're at at the moment with the things here in the Hartley. I just love how it's coming together. And again, like though it has gone very slowly, I am thankful in a way that we've been able to move that slow or we've had to move that slow because it's allowed us to make some different decisions that I think in the end will make this space so much better. Uh, the jury's still out on what we're gonna do in the back formal garden area. I kind of feel like I want to get this space buttoned up and kind of some shape to it so it's likely we won't even touch anything over there until next year. Uh, but I just, I don't want to rip up anymore. Like I think if Aaron, I don't know where he's at. I think if Aaron had his way, he would just blow that whole garden out right now and just have it all be a blank slate because then, you know, if you have a blank slate, sometimes it makes you move a little bit faster. Um, but that area will see some retooling of some kind. I'm just not 
100% clear on what we're gonna end up doing back there. One other thing I did wanna mention is as you're looking through the windows of the Harley, like you can look and see this gorgeous seating area, and then you look up and you can see the truck sitting right there. Not like the most ideal view, you know, we are working on fixing the area behind the barn. So we got to do a big clean out of that area. We may even do a video when we do that big clean out. We're going to work it to where we can park like the gators back there. And so right now we're parking them in the barn, um, but we would like to move things back behind so that we actually have space in the barn to maybe park our trucks, which will be nice in so many different for so many different reasons. One, it will open up the view right to the raised bed vegetable garden, which is a, a prettier view than looking at the trucks, um, but also having our trucks under cover, you know, in the winter time, that will be quite nice so walk will be longer of course you know from the house to the cars but uh, not that much longer so those are all my thoughts on this area other than let's go down to the garden center and get some plants Erin decided to come with me we're actually at Home Depot first because I want to try to find a garbage can like maybe some kind of a wicker so I don't even know if they have stuff like that here we're gonna go ahead and walk through the plant section because that's probably the best way into the store they've got mums out boy that's early yeah they're blooming yep these are pretty They've put a Rudbeckia and a mum and a lemon cypress, a celosia and a fern all together in a container. The echinacea are gorgeous. Sweet summer. Huh. These are the things I need to get for the windowsill behind the counter in some taller, thin terracotta pots. I would love to put some stuff, you know, behind that, the ledge in the, behind the counter. Oh, yeah. But they have to be things that can handle that sun in the morning. Let's see if there's anything interesting over here. Look pretty good. If these are clean, I might get one of these. I had two of these palms to put in the Hartley earlier this season, and I ended up using them in the two containers in the portico, you know, by our double doors there. And I've loved them there, but that leaves me without any palms for the Hartley for now. So I might grab one of these. I had to check them for spider mites first though. They look really clean. I gotta get a cart. like this. That's kind of neat for the counter. Low maintenance too. I also want to grab a little brush. I like this one. It's wood. It looks a little bit more natural. And a dustpan. Oh, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Maybe a long handled broom as well. It's got a wood handle. There it is. Yes. Well, we found a couple of things at this first stop and then Aaron got Benjamin some nails and his own hammer. One of the things that both Aaron and I got to do when we were growing up was our parents would set us up with nails and a hammer and a log of some kind. And we would just spend a bunch of time hammering in nails. So I think you will actually enjoy that. Okay, we're down at Andrew's now. Look at these hanging baskets. Aren't they awesome? I think they recently got a house plant load in, so I'm excited. Okay. Oh, they've got cute bunny stuff. Oh, look at that. Look how cute. I like those pots too. Ooh, I like these bookends. My goodness, so many cute things. Some philodendrons, those are great. These are pretty pileas. Peperomias are super forgiving. There's some really pretty ones. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty. Yep. Okay. Hit me. Thank you. I wish I was not so drawn to ferns. They're such a pain to keep looking nice in our area, but they are so pretty. Oh, yes, rosemary. I think we need one of these in there. Tuscan blue? I think so. Oh, what kind is this? This one's pretty too. Madeline Hill, zone six. This is zone seven kind of like the bolder leaf of this one, the Tuscan blue over this one looks more silvery. I think this is a really great start. So I've got, I don't know, four or five plants inside in a box. So I'm gonna go gather those up, take my rosemary, and we're gonna go home and do some potting.
we ended up with nine brand new beautiful plants and a few other supplies. Just seeing this plant life here, uh, I don't know, it just makes the space feel alive and I'm loving it. So we got one palm, this is a majesty palm right there. And I'm thinking that this one, well, it looks really pretty right there to bring some height. Almost use one for that corner as well. Maybe we'll, you know, I do have a fig in the, studio though. And that's the thing, when we run to the barn to grab our pots and soil to get these plants repotted, I do have a small handful of plants I want to move out here. So we'll take a look at those. I think there's maybe, I don't know, maybe there's five or six. And then moving to the counter here, we've got a Rex begonia. I love the color of this one, that bright kind of lime green with the dark maroon flecks along the margin. And the leaf shape is still kind of that swirly. It's really pretty. Then we've got a peperomia, which the tag says assorted peperomia. It looks a lot like a watermelon peperomia to me. Either way, it's beautiful and these are really forgiving. Then we've got a strawberry begonia here and I just love the pink stems and the delicate look of this plant. Then we have a calathea, which these two, both of these are calatheas. These are gonna be our fussy ones out of the group right here. These tend to leaf burn. These tend to attract spider mites, so we'll see how it goes. But this is an Ornata uh, pinstripe, so it's got the pink stripes in its leaves. It's so pretty, and it looks so darn healthy. And this one is a Calathea roseopicta. I love the bold leaves and just the design. It's so pretty. Then our Tuscan Blue Rosemary. Then an Alpine Junior Schefflera, which looks so gorgeous. Looks like it was just recently shined. Look at that. It almost looks fake. I love the structure of it. Got my ice water here, and then we've got a ficus, which I put in the sink and watered it right away when we got it home because it was so, so darn dry. Um, I also picked up for our other supplies, I got some soap, some Tuscan pear soap at uh, Marshall's. We got a broom at uh, Home Depot. And then I did pick up this little wicker organizer thing. It fits perfectly under here. And I thought it might be nice to have like some cleaning supplies in here. Um, we've got our brush that I picked up at Home Depot along with the dustpan right there and then maybe like a storage for some smaller saucers that are kind of hard to stack you know because there is this floor is not 100 percent even because these are natural stones um, so there's a lot of irregularity and so unless you get the stuff in like the perfect spot it's going to want to tip so this might be kind of nice for some smaller items. And then over here, I did run out into the garden and I picked a super quick bouquet. I feel like I want to fuss with it, but it's fine. It's got a lot of pretty color in it. But I picked up these coasters. I am a coaster person. Um, anyway, these are really pretty. That kind of white and gray marble looks beautiful, contrasting the blue stone. Okay, so now the fun part. I'm gonna go gather up all of our supplies to get our repotting done. We're gonna do it all in here because why not? We've got all the plants laid out. Um, and I just feel like this is a perfect start to this space. I love it. really starting to look like a greenhouse in here. Look at all these plants. Okay guys, so this Pegasus begonia, these are the ones we pulled out of the kitchen window box last fall. You remember that? We did it kind of late in the season. I put all of them, they looked kind of bad. I think there was five all together and I put them all in this pot and they just, they bounced beautifully. Not all five of them survived. In fact, I think three of them survived out of the five. 
uh, but it's just absolutely beautiful. We've got some potting soil in a watering can, and then I've just got pots all over the place. A bunch of different pots, some saucers. The unfortunate part about a lot of the concrete pots you buy is that they don't come with matching saucers. So you either have to use terracotta, which looks kind of odd, you know, to use terracotta under a gray pot, or you have to go plastic, which is probably what we'll do today for the most part. You can see a bunch of terracotta in here for our smaller plants. I do have this little holder, which is kind of cool. I picked this up at the garden center last year, um, and I had it on our concrete table by the back kitchen entrance with plectranthus in it. Uh, I thought it would be kind of nice to have, you know, some pruners right here, uh, a knife, probably bring some scissors out here, a little shovel, just stuff, you know, to help with repotting and chores like that. A couple of beautiful pots with these little topiary forms. And then I've got a couple more plants from in the studio. This cactus I've had since our last house. It just is amazing and it's lived, it lived inside on a kind of shady windowsill for a really long time. And then we've got this philodendron. Is this a philodendron, right? Anyway, it's kind of leggy. I need to put it in a pot. I think I'm going to plant it in one of these. And then I've got this cute little thing. I actually picked this up at Marshall's a couple weeks ago. It's just like a little wood base with little silver feet. Thought it looked cute with a few aloe plants all lined up on it. And then that's the fig I was talking about. So these are the fig starts that I took last year off of the tall one. Was it last year or the year before? Anyway, I rooted these from the fig that I have inside our house. Isn't that awesome? Okay, I'm gonna stand over the AC unit for just a minute hauling stuff outside today. It's over 100 degrees outside, so yeah, it's pretty warm out. Feels really good right here. Ah, I just love looking across here and seeing all that activity. So much fun. I think what I'm gonna do is just set up around that counter area where I've got water and all my cleaning supplies, and I'll get everything repotted. I'm just using the regular organic potting mix for everything today, nothing special, no special blend. Even for the palm, I'm gonna use regular potting soil. Typically, if I do that, like you can use a cactus soil because it's faster draining. Typically, typically they like a fast draining soil, but if I use a regular potting soil, I just don't water quite as much and they seem to stay very happy. And I like the whole not watering as much aspect of that. And then in terms of pot size, I usually just go up, you know, one or two, maybe pot size bigger than the pot it's currently in um, so that they don't shock. Some people will tell you to bring new plants home and let them sit for a couple of weeks before you even repot them. Like the, let them get used to their spot. Uh, I do not have such patience, so I'm just going to get them all repotted today. They'll get all of the things done to them all at once, the moving and the replanting, and then they can get used to the spot. And who wouldn't want to live in here? I would if I was a plant. I'm starting backed up here so we can get a feel for the whole space. So on this side, you can see the two large plants in the corners and then our little flower arrangement. Our centerpiece, which is large, looking good though, I love it. 
and then all of our new plants look at this space you guys <gasps> Oh, so Pegasus begonia, I'm just leaving it right here. I'll probably bring in a plant stand right in this space, the one I was talking about, the stair step one from Gardner Supply. It's black, and I think it'll look really good with a collection of plants here. And it's likely, like you can see, this side is the south side of the greenhouse. It gets a lot more sun in the afternoon. I was trying to, trying to be mindful of the plants that got the most amount of sun over here that they would like it. Um, but it'll be nice to maybe do some shadier, shade-loving stuff on this side. Uh, but on the console table, we have the philodendron, which was reaching really bad towards light. So it's looking a little bit mangy at the moment, but I think being in here and if, with how bright it is, it will really kind of pick up and start looking good. I did think about, and I probably will, see like this long arm right here. I'll probably cut this one off and root it, um, like put it in some water, let it form some roots, and that way we can pop them back in the soil and maybe make the plant a little bit more well-rounded. And then we've got the three aloes, which I had in the studio already. And this right here, and I cannot think of the name of it. You guys probably know what it is. It is like on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it. But I've had it for a while. And I think it looks really pretty in here. <laughs> this little plastic saucer. That's the only thing I don't like about uh, using these more decorative pots. Sometimes you don't see them as much like on this one. So I'll need to find a smaller one for, for this little pot. Then we've got the new ficus that we picked up today which I think it looks really pretty. It brings a little bit of structure, I think. And then one of the calatheas and our palm, which is a little bit tall. It is brushing the shades up there, but we're not moving the shades up and down. They just stay up the whole time. Um, so I have a feeling though that this one will end up right down here, like on one of these corners. And then here's our little supply area, which will likely, like I said, it'll probably move to this area once I figure out what kind of, if I wanna do like a little curtain or some something, you know what I mean, in this spot. I don't even mind it. Like if I just clustered some pots under there, I don't think you'd even notice the infrastructure. I mean, it's a greenhouse, so it's okay. And then the countertop, I already went through all the names of these plants, so I'll just kind of show you how I arranged them. I don't think I mentioned I did bring the pineapple plant that we potted up earlier this spring and put in the front sun porch. I brought that in here. And I ordered these little wood risers off of Amazon. Earlier on, they're like super lightweight, really lightweight risers, but it's kind of nice to have a few little things like that. In fact, I feel like I could use a little, a few more uh, in this area, but I kind of like the uh, structures here. The two topiary forms, something fluffy, something spiky, you know, something with a different color. And then we've got rounded texture right here. We've got a few little supplies, which everything will evolve uh, based on what I figure that I need in this area or what I always have to go grab from the barn, you know, every time I do a project. And I'll probably rearrange a little bit in here. I don't know if I want the whole countertop full of plants or not. I'll probably want to keep some of this open completely um, for a potting tray that I'll keep underneath the, co the counter and then I can bring it out when I'm ready to do some more potting so I'm right by the sink and I won't have to shift plants every time. And then I moved one of the tradescanches to this corner right here. It looks pretty right there. And here's a look back this direction, standing right directly in front of the sink, like my back is touching the counter right now. Isn't that so much fun, you guys? I just, I can't even believe it. Cannot believe it. Definitely a pinch me moment out here. I mean, spending not just a little time sitting out here uh, in this space, but actually potting stuff and messing with plants for a while and just being out in this space, just getting the feel for it. It's just amazing. I can't even believe it. And that is it for today's project, you guys, just kind of gathering some things up. I do need to put a little hose in here. I still need to find a garbage can. I didn't find anything like that at either Marshall's or Home Depot. Those are the two places we went other than the garden center uh, today. And then, you know, we'll move some things in as we, like I just realized I need to have hand towels out here, um, you know, with the sink and with the stuff we're gonna be doing, I need to have like a stack of, you know, I've got those little napkins, but that doesn't really do it. Um, I need to get some pretty towels out here. I think that would be nice. Um, yeah, I think that's really the only thing I noticed today. I mean, it would be nice to have a vacuum out here, but I don't really know where I would put something like that. And it's definitely cooler on the other side of this greenhouse. I mean, we're not keeping it cooled to like an interior temperature. I'm gonna stand in front of it for a minute. Oh, oh my goodness. But I went through a pile of batteries because they kept overheating. Um, and it's definitely warmer on that end for sure. But completely doable. Like. I don't know if I would have been able to work out in the plastic greenhouse 
today, I think it would have just been way too hot. And then of course, if you're out in the full sun, it's, it's hot too. So anyway, overall super pleasant. I'm loving it so, so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of seeing the first shift of setup in here. Um, and we'll have more and more of it as we get closer to fall. I am planning on doing a little fall decorating in here. Uh, and I'm trying to decide what to do for Christmas. What would you guys do? Like, would you get a small tree to put on the table? Would you get a skinny tall tree that goes all the way to the floor for the center? Or would you get one that goes here? Or would you get one, like we could shift this table over and put the tree right here. We could get a smaller one and put it on the counter. I don't know, there's a few options. I don't really feel like anywhere over in this side would, is really an option. Uh, we'll do something on the table. I feel like it's either gotta be in the center or in one of these other three locations. Anyway, let me know in the comment section what you guys would do for Christmas in terms of a tree out here because I am gonna do something. Last year we put our old great room tree um, out here and those interior lights, it was weird when we were in the, this Hartley and I took pictures, just the most magical thing. But when you were outside looking in, I don't know if it was the sheer amount of other Christmas lights we had outside that made the tree in here look really dim, but it looked so, so dim. Uh, and I don't know what the deal was with that. And it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I think we're not gonna light, like do the outer exterior lights on the greenhouse this year. Um, and hopefully that will make it shine a little bit more, but maybe there's exterior grade trees, if that's a thing. That's it guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.